Hello and welcome to another episode of Smart Tips. I'm Jeff Gonzalez and today I'm going to walk us through how we can auto start and update timelines for our task records. We're going to use a couple of formulas, just one automation. Let's jump in and see what I'm talking about. So I'm working here out of this project management template solution. You can find it directly from our template gallery. I'm in our tasks table. I've added a handful of fields, but I'm going to be working with this due date field that already existed the moment that I installed the template. One field I've added is this number field called days of work. And what this is going to do is it, it's going to tell me what I'm forecasting for in terms of the number of days this task should take to complete. The next thing that I'll point out is a dependency field. This already existed as well. All I've done is gone ahead and said that the task right above it is the predecessor for this task. So example, budget developments, predecessor task, business requirements, its successor task, technical requirements. We'll keep it very simple for today's demonstration. The next thing that I want to do is I want to bring the status of our predecessor task. Let me first explain what we're going to do. The moment that I complete a task, let's say user recruitment and onboarding, I want it to go ahead and move the next task marketing and communication strategy from planned to in process. But I also want the end date from the predecessor task to populate here as the start date for this successor task. And I want automations to do all that work for me. So what we have to do is we have to create a relationship between these two records and then be able to take some of the information from this record down into the successor record. So we're going to use formulas to be able to do so. Using dot notation, we can actually dial into records that have a relationship to this record. So when I want to bring the status over predecessor status into marketing and communication strategy, I see in process matches with in process. This makes sense. Everything is working. I'll open up this formula really quickly. I'm using the related record sort function. And what you're able to do with this is say, Hey, uh, there's a dependency in place here. Specifically, I want to look at the predecessor and there could be multiple predecessors, right? But I want to bring a status value over from one specific predecessor. Which predecessor exactly? I want you to go by the end date due date from that predecessor task. Um, and I want you to give it to me in descending order. Now I've used related record sort we do have records sort. It's going to give me one individual value. So by choosing descending order, it's going to give me the latest end date of all of the predecessor tasks that are linked to this task. And in that way, we can figure out exactly when that very last task is going to move into complete. And that's what's going to trigger our automation. I'll show the automation setup here in a moment. A couple of other fields to show. We then have our predecessor end date. And we're essentially going to do the same thing, but we're going to bring the latest date value, the latest end date, due date value from our list of predecessor tasks. Like I mentioned, in this case, there's just one predecessor for examples sake, but what we're going to do is use the max output. And so max is going to give us the largest value. In this case, since we're doing a date field, we're going to use that same dot notation sequence, dependency, predecessor, the due date, the end date specifically from that due date field. I want you to give me the very latest date from the dependencies that are linked here within that predecessor category. I'm wrapping it in a date function. You don't necessarily need to do this, but important to, to note, if you have some sort of output and you want to ensure that the system treats it as a date for ways that you use it in other automations, you can always wrap it in a date field. Similarly, you can use the number function to be able to tell the system, hey, this output is a number. And you can always use the text function as well to be able to say, treat this as just static text if you want the system to do so. But in this case, yes, we're going to bring that latest predecessor end date. And let's go ahead and check our work here. 17th of October for marketing and communication strategy. If we come up here to user recruitment and onboarding, it looks like 17th of October. Perfect. It is working all the way down the line. Now, the next thing I want to do is determine 
what that task end date is forecasted for. Like we talked about in the very beginning, this days of work field is what is forecasting the length of or duration of that time it takes to complete this task. So in this case, I'm working from the 9th of October to the 17th. When I complete this task and I start this next one, I want 17th of October to populate here. And then I want there to be seven days or seven work days until this end date. We can use a formula called workday to be able to determine what that end date could or should look like. Let's open this up. Very simple formula, but extremely powerful. One of the lesser used functions by customers that I work with, I have the workdays function. And what this does is it says, hey, I have a date field here at some point in my record, and I want to add a number of days to this record, but I don't want to factor weekends in. Now we can use a static value here. In this case, I'm using a dynamic value because there is a number field here that's telling me the days of work. So I'm just adding that days of work here to be predecessor end date, that other formula output, and I'm telling it not to factor weekends to essentially skip over Saturday and Sunday. And that is how we're getting this output here on the right-hand side. Now that we've covered the data portion, which I believe is the more complex portion, let's go into the very simple automation that makes this work. Now, I'm starting this with the trigger of when a record matches conditions, specifically when that predecessor status. So we looked the status up essentially from our predecessor task. And we said the moment that that equals complete, that's when we are going to trigger our automation. What do I want to have happen? I want you to move the status into in process. And then I want you to take the due date start and end. And I want you to plug in the predecessor end date and task end date, those formulas that we created into those due date values respectively. A very simple automation, but very powerful. Really quickly while we're here, let's go ahead and see how this works. Awesome, as you can see, 17th of October populated here in the start date. And there are seven work days between the 17th and the 28th. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.